This is me. This has always been here, but it's always been stopped because of the world around me. Hello world. Happy Sunday or Monday or Tuesday or any other day of the week that you're checking this out on. Welcome to Dwell On It. I'm Taylor. If you're new here, if you'd like a recap, remember that Dwell On It is a series where I answer your questions about my lived experience or the lived experience of trans individuals, questions about the trans community, you know, education, insight, and honestly, sometimes super random stuff. What's your favorite brand of headphones? You know, do you use PC, Mac, whatever, throw them at you. Because remember, when it's all said and done, trans individuals are just as human as everyone around you too, right? And so knowing that, that if you want to ask me what my favorite sports teams are, if there's ever been a certain player that's been an inspiration, do I have hobbies, go for it. Because remember that my lived experience isn't necessarily always about HRT or where do I get my nails done. It's about what life is like as a human being surviving some pretty serious oppression every now and again. So I've got my grab bag that's got questions already loaded up in there. This one's for real, for real this time. I'm not going to go off of questions that I think are going to be really quick <laughs> and, and intercept. Please add to the pile and let's get your questions included. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are. Before we get too far into things, because I was showing the grab bag, I'd like to use that as a reminder that I've got two fundraisers going on. One is for Shoppers Love You Run For Women. That is a fundraiser for women's mental health awareness and women's wellness programs. In Winnipeg, the support goes to Mood Disorders Association of Manitoba. I'm trying to reach $1,411 for that fundraiser, so if you'd like to go ahead and contribute to that, receive a tax receipt. In the description is a link. Please click link. Please add money. Get tax receipt. Help support. <laughs> And then in that same description right beside that link is one for Walk for Muscular Dystrophy, another fundraiser that's happening almost at the exact same time. Run for Women is on June 5th, Walk for Muscular Dystrophy is on June 11th. Same thing, I'm going for $1,411 for that too. Click the link, throw what you want in there. Tax receipt sent your way with a contribution over $1 and then you're gonna go ahead and help support a very, very important cause in that regards too. So we've got Women's Mental Health Awareness and Women's Wellness Programs and Muscular Dystrophy and realistically over 160 neuromuscular disorders there are Canadians who truly appreciate your support so please help out as much as you can as often as you can to share those speaking of sharing while we're here before we get into things if you're new here please subscribe I'd love to see more people continue to stay you know active engaged with this hit the notification icon too if you like getting those updates if you like the content please hit like subscribes and likes help amplify the message in the algorithms and then finally the human side Side of things is hit share because I can only speak to who I'm able to reach and so by sharing you're helping broaden that scope. This message is really important all the time for more people to see and if you help get other people to notice that it's only going to help that much more. So like, share, subscribe, grab bag time, let's see what we got. How do you feel about where you are during your transition right now? I've never been happier. I have never been happier. Every day since the day that I accepted myself has been the best day of my life. I'm not saying that every day has been the easiest day of my life, but every day has been the best day of my life. Coming from a place where I never wanted to wake up and didn't have the courage to do anything about that, but to be excited to wake up, to be excited to just have another day to live, to exist, to be, to get frustrated about times where I find myself laying in bed, getting lost in news or something like that, being like, you have things to do get up do things be happy it's such a difference i couldn't be more grateful for my past self hanging in there and letting me get to where i am today when i received my birth certificate for my legal name change that was my finish line but otherwise in the sense of where i am during my transition right now i'm in my life and i cannot be more happy. I wish I could just dive into this even deeper. The reality is take a look through this entire series of Dwell On It and you're going to hear more than enough stories about happiness and overcoming obstacles, comparing a past life to today. So please jump in there, check any previous episode out. I try to list them in the in the description with chapters and bookmarks for your own curiosity. But how do I feel? God damned great. I couldn't explain that with any more passion. Has transitioning taught you anything about life? <laughs> see above. Again, something that I have alluded to previously. I feel like I'm going to say that regularly with more episodes as they go on, so I should probably stop saying that I spoke about this before, but I really encourage people to take a look at previous chapters. And in fairness, I'm also working on some uh, some content to hopefully revitalize some of those older episodes without deleting and re-uploading, because I know that they're older content. But nonetheless, if you can watch some of the older episodes and hang in there with, with production quality, seriously, you're going you're gonna to see a lot of storytelling 
storytelling in that sense. If I compared myself to a past life, I'd like to say that, but I'd like to say, I'll say that I could confidently compare the life that I had to a very cishet conservative male because that was the life that I was trying to present and it was very restricted and reserved and if for no other reason because I felt like there was no harm being done to me except for a lot of the violence that was happening to me indirectly and silently because of the world around me so let's just take that with a grain of salt comparing where life was then and now and and honest to goodness for any anyone watching this right now who has known me in a past life could likely attest to this I never really represented happiness sure I had a smile sure I can light up a room with a laugh. Sure, I can, you know, help support people and so on. I don't think that I've ever glowed with happiness as much as I do today. I've known about the the oppressive systems around us, so that's not really an education side of things. And honestly, even when it comes to how peers have proven themselves to be exactly but that, especially when they're the most needed, those aren't new to me at all. Because I know that as a trans individual, and not only a trans individual, but also an advocate, that's a very small percentage of people on the planet who have that same type of energy. And it's not easy to keep up with. So I get that. You really discover how strong you are when you start transitioning. When you start facing the fear of the world around you and you realize how much the world puts on you, and you still march forward, all of those questions you've ever had during your entire life wondering if you can make it, if you can do it, if you're gonna be okay, are you gonna be fine? And then you realize that you're not only just fine, you're thriving. There are difficult days. There's no question about that. I'm not saying that every trans person is living the high life. I'm not saying I'm living the high life, that's for sure. But to be able to succeed every day in the direct opposition of the fears that you had about your days before you started transitioning, to learn and discover the people who support you, who are around you, who love you and hold the word love for what it is, the people who believe in you and the people who've never believed in you, the people who you thought you could trust and the people who you knew you couldn't, for those to all just have a visibility now when you are able to be authentic and real with yourself and see how much more real the world is around you is, is just a, an absolutely amazing nugget of information that you can't read or find or experience everywhere unless you do it. What transitioning has taught me about life is life is meaningful. Transitioning has taught me that my life is worth it. My life is worth the fight. And not only is my life worth the fight, the kids and the trans individuals who aren't able to get to, I, I don't want to put myself on a pedestal, but who aren't able to just approach the day with this much passion and joy and happiness and excitement because of an oppressive world around them. I've learned my life is worth fighting for. Their lives are worth fighting for. The generations that are behind them that no one ever thinks about far enough. That's what transitioning has taught me about life. Transitioning has taught me how to live and transitioning taught me how to love life when I used to hate it, when I used to just despise waking up because it was another day of mediocrity, another day of redundant failures, another day of spinning my tires, another day of hoping that somehow magically the world is going to make it easier and better for me, or someday I would wake up with essentially amnesia and forget my identity and meld into the world that's around me instead. Transitioning has taught me how to love myself, transitioning has taught me how to love the community around me, and transitioning has taught me how to represent my values, and transitioning has taught me that I am one of the strongest people. Maybe not in physical strength, maybe not in reach, but I know that I am one of the most unique and passionate and courageous Canadians there is. There is nothing in a school, in a book, in a magazine, in an online forum, a chit chat with a friend, a doctor, a counselor, nothing will ever teach me about life as much as me taking the journey, as much as me trusting myself and me accepting myself. Nothing will teach me more about life than me allowing myself to learn to love it. I've never been happier and I'm and I'm energized and passionate. I, I, I would never say that I wish I did this earlier because I wouldn't be who I am today without who I've already been. If I could at least go through life with the energy I have today and take back my youth, my teens, my 20s, my 30s, and take back the life that was taken away from me because of my own despair, my own, my, 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 my hopelessness, my fear, I was able to take that back and just 
give the life that I knew I had. This, this isn't an injection of happiness. This is me. This has always been here, but it's always been stopped because of the world around me until I decided to create the world around me instead of try to be part of the world around me. Has transitioning taught me anything about life? It's shown me everything that life is because I finally have one. I, I couldn't be more grateful to learn that, to experience it, to have it, to own it, and to share that. <laughs> <laughs> How is your financial situation? Well, back to has transitioning taught me anything about life? Well, you 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 still you stay broke. Yeah, you get more broke. <laughs> it's not unpredictable. How's that for an answer? My net worth starts with a negative. I'm fine. I hardly have the, you know, the, the billions of dollars that I'd like to, you know, wish that I had, but I'm sure most people wouldn't be opposed to that. I, I have debt. Uh, I'd love to see that debt paid off, but slow and steady. I've got a budget that I'm happy with. I am still able to comfortably support people if they need need help. I have no problem donating here or GoFundMeing there and so on. Like, of course, I still have to be mindful of my own expenses and living situation and so on. I, I don't have loose money to throw around. I am able to just continue to keep pushing forward and I'm fine with that. You know, if a financial analyst looked at how my financial situation is, the answer is like, wow, that's not great. <laughs> um, but I you know, my door locks, I have a roof over my head, I've got food in the fridge, even though I've got food in the fridge, in the freezer, in the pantry, and, and tons of whatever, I'm still able to order food comfortably and, and not feel like I'm deciding if this is between food or medication. So, uh, financial situation on paper by, by technicality, poor. <laughs> How is my financial situation as a day-to-day -day human being? Fine survivable. <laughs> uh, will it get better with a raise? For sure. Will it get better with less debt? Absolutely. The financial situation for trans individuals is rarely positive for multiple reasons. Maintaining employment as a trans individual is not a, a given. Holding a job as a trans individual is not a gimme. And if not holding a job, but also finding a job. It's it's very unfair and it's a straight reality that discrimination is very much a real thing, whether or not it's actually vocalize in the decision making process and then add the fact that transitioning is the gender affirming care is also not universally recognized by health systems look what's happening in the states when it comes to states that are passing bills that are considering it child abuse to to support children whether it's early stages of transition or just recognizing their gender identity this is nothing to do about surgery or anything like that but it is literally to just get themselves acclimated to where they are in life and where they are to be for myself in Manitoba and Winnipeg, when I finally got the courage to go to clinic for trans health care, I understand that, of course, at my age, I do have a little less resistance in terms of informed consent and whatnot. When it was all said and done, after a couple sessions with the social worker, and then another, you know, another session with a doctor, to just talk it out about, okay, here's what transitioning entails in this department, and be like, yeah, okay, gimme, 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 and I sign some papers, and that's it. My medications are covered by my benefits. I haven't explored anything like surgery. I have talked about surgeries before. I'm not interested in considering any of those anyway, right? Aside from an orky, I've mentioned that before, but that's covered by Manitoba Health. Laser facial hair removal was covered by Manitoba Health. Speech language pathology, should I have chosen to stay in that instead of get really mad at the program about their very binary system? Covered by Manitoba Health. A trans woman in uh, in Manitoba appealed for, for Manitoba Health to cover facial feminization surgery. Those are things that needed to get appealed, but nonetheless, those are all expenses. And th those are all for like gender affirming reasons. They're, they're not for changing your look or anything like that or changing your style or whatever. This is health care. This is, this is quality of living care. This is ability to cope with life care. For individuals who, like I said, who are struggling for employment, then also need to find a way to source these medications, for example, out of pocket. That's money. As I mentioned that I've got workplace benefits that cover my prescriptions and so on. But if I was paying out of pocket just for my prescriptions, $400 every three months. Look at the gas prices right now. <laughs> just put it that way. This is an expense for quality of living and that needs to get budgeted in. I could talk about things like wardrobe and glam and whatnot. Those are personal preferences and those are decisions that I can and will make if I ever had to. If I ever felt myself in an absolute bind, you better believe that I'm going to skip a nail session for sure. But I can't skip a prescription. My financial situation will eventually get better. I've got two 
standalones and when both of those are done presuming no surprise chaos between now and a few years from now it'll be just so much better no question about that my financial situation could be better believe me right I'd love to trip over a sack of cash for like 50k it still wouldn't cover everything but cover most of it <laughs> I'd think nothing of it right you know a lot of people want to you know win a billion dollars or whatever I just I want to get myself back to ground zero because then I can get back to a point where I can start recreating that part of my life because a lot of my life was spent trying to fit in and if, if that meant I was always going to events or socializing or spending more than I had to here or there so I could feel like I was in the company of others and then don't forget as well that I had two wardrobes for a period of time so that was certainly an expense in itself there's a lot of additional expenses that were happenstances of trying to cope with my own life all I want to do is I just want to get back to ground zero I'd love to just get my loans paid off have my credit card paid off and say ça I'll still keep working, I'll still live the same life that I have, I'll still live in this box, <laughs> but at least I now have that, that, that ability to reset, start over, and build that life that I know that I have a right to. Is there a movie or a book that you totally connect with, trans or not? Is this the part where I'm supposed to say The Matrix? <laughs> Um, but no, in, in seriousness, I don't have much connection when it comes to movies or books as in this this is part of my life in, in a certain sort of way. Except for The Fifth Element. It's with no question my favorite movie. I am an absolute sucker for love anyway. <laughs> Sometimes as oddly lame and campy as it is, it's still also just a fantastic story. Whether it's become a meme in itself or whatever, the movie itself just makes me happy right like it's that's a movie where if it turned on at any point it would just make me smile and i'll stop what i'm doing and i'll start watching it because i love it so much does it resonate with me as a human being like are there elements pardon the pun of the movie that i'm like oh that that yeah no definitely not uh and and in fairness i can't really think of any movies that do. Another movie that I didn't realize connected with me as much as it did until the more I think about it is The Sandlot. It really didn't represent my life at all, <laughs> realistically, but the, the passion for baseball. I have a feeling that if I was able to, you know, participate in sports, organize sports uh, more as a kid, and especially if I was able to, you know, get into baseball as a kid, I have a feeling that movie would have resonated with me that much more. That's just another movie where it's like, yeah, I can, I can sit with this. This is the this is fine. It still doesn't like define my life in any way. Or th those are two types of movies that I don't question if they're worth my time to watch. I I'd love to read more, but I think I just read enough by having my face shoved in monitors all the time. But when it comes to movies, I don't watch many movies, largely because I feel like I've got more things on the go. I was mentioning in the last episode that I would be watching movies when I'd be IPLing my legs or whatever, but that's because I'm parked and may as well watch something like that but to stop what I'm doing and just turn on the TV to watch a movie or a show or whatever is usually not my gig like I said if you know if Fifth Element was on if the Sandlot was on those are two that bring me joy I don't know why they connect with me so superficial I love love well that's not superficial but I love love there's lots of movies about love right like the notebook is one that I'm sure that many people can think of automatically and I love baseball and softball Lots of movies about baseball and softball. All right, that was really fun. I like that last one. It really makes me want to watch a movie now. Uh, let's wrap up on this. I had a lot of fun here. Thank you so much for these questions. So if you like the content, please hit like. And if you haven't done it yet, please subscribe. Both of those, aside from just making sure that it lets me know how I'm doing, it also lets the YouTube and Instagram and whatever other social media platforms you see this on, lets the algorithms in there know that they are videos that are encouraged to be watched by other people too. So remember, you're not only helping me, but you're helping the system. That is so important when it comes to getting this visibility seen and heard by others. On that note, please share in whatever platform it is that you're watching this on. There is also a share button. Click that and add it to your social media links, or you can go ahead and copy the link and send it by a text or an email or whatever. But please do me a huge solid by liking, sharing, and subscribing. Those are all little mechanisms that help make sure that this channel, this message, this entire experience gets seen by as many people as possible, and I can't reach where I have been without you and I can't reach any further goals without you too so I need you and that's gonna mean so much not only to me but to everybody who this channel is trying to support and as I mentioned last week that it's the trans community and of course the cis individuals who are looking to learn as well while we're talking about support remember there are two fundraisers in the description of this video that there's one for run for women which supports women's mental health and women's wellness programs and the fundraiser that I am taking part in is supporting mood disorder 
Builders Association of Manitoba. $1,411 is the target for that one. And right underneath that link is the Walk for Muscular Dystrophy, and that is helping Canadians who are experiencing neuromuscular disorders. There are over 160 neuromuscular disorders, and Canadians need your help. So $1,411 for that fundraiser too. Both have electronic tax receipts sent to you with an online donation, so please jump in there, contribute what you see fit, share those too. And the last link, as always, there's one for new mode. That is a call to action to send a message to political leaders in your area. It takes less than a minute. There's a pre-made letter, name, email address, postal code, hit send. That goes to the elected officials in your area, whether it's the city, the province, federally, and no matter where you are, it sends the message to the mayors of Winnipeg and Toronto as well. Let them know and get your voice heard that you find it is important to optimize the corporate social responsibilities of the businesses organizations and companies in your neighborhood in your area so they're helping contribute to more diversity inclusion equity in their immediate vicinity which only helps make a better and stronger more stable neighborhood for all and that is something super important please make sure to do that too hit share when you're done that too surprise let's wrap up on this i had tons of fun with these questions i hope you enjoyed this please like share subscribe if you haven't yet have a great rest of the night have a great rest of your week as always, and I'll talk to you next week.